When it comes to building AI agents, Langchain is one of the most popular frameworks used in order to build out these different forms of agents, whether it's an AI appointment center, an AI customer support agent, or anything else you can imagine, Langchain has got your back. And today I'm gonna show you from A to Z how to build an agent based on Langchain by using Flowwise, which makes it easy in a drag and drop interface. Before we jump in, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content in the future. So Langchain is a framework to build with LLMs by chaining interoperable components. Now, if you're not a developer, using Langchain may be a little bit difficult, but that is where Flowwise comes in. Now, with Flowwise, you can actually build out agents by simply dragging and dropping, connecting different nodes, and writing out your prompts in an easy and simple way. If you have no idea how to install Flowwise, I actually just made a video about that, so click up here and watch that video so that you have Flowwise on a hosted server, and then you can come back to this video and come with me on this tutorial. So inside the Flowwise dashboard, all we're going to do is we're going to click on add new and that is going to add a new chat flow. We're then going to click on save and we're going to name it. And in this case, we're going to be building an AI customer support agent. So now that we've saved, we have an empty canvas. And if we click up here on the top left, we can add notes. Now Flowwise also supports Llama index, but we're going to be using Langchain for the purpose of this video. Now, the first thing we're going to do in order to build out our AI agent is to actually select an agent. And we're going to open up the agent tab, scroll down and select the tool agent, which is an agent that uses function calling to pick the tools and args to call. We're going to drop that in here, zoom out a little bit. And this is now our agent. This agent will have access to tools, which we want to give it access to, which can include retrieving certain information from a vector database. If we want to build a knowledge base memory, which is going to allow us to give the agent memory of the past conversation, a tool calling chat model, which in our case, we're going to be using open AI, but you can use a ton of different models as well, such as Anthropic and input moderation, which allows you to detect text that could generate harmful output and prevent it from being sent to the language model, which in this case, we're going to leave blank, but in certain cases, if you want to avoid people to abuse the agent with sexual content, for example, then this can be very useful as well. Before we move on, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. It's a great way to support this free content that we put out. If you go ahead and click on additional parameters, this is where we set up our system message, which is our system prompt, which we're going to be giving the AI support agent. And we're going to be building that out in a second. Now that we have the tool agent done, we're going to simply hook it up to an open AI node. So we're going to type in open AI up here. We're going going to scroll down and we're going to use chat open AI. This is going to allow us to give the tool agent access to our open AI API access. And we're going to connect this over here to the tool calling chat model. All you need to do now is click on this drop down. You simply go ahead and create new. You can name the credential the way that you want to name it. And then you simply go to platform.openai.com, get your API key and paste it into here. Once you've done that, you can simply select the OpenAI key from the dropdown and it is now successfully hooked up. The next thing we're going to do is select the model name. I would recommend everyone goes with GPT-40, which is the fastest, the cheapest and the best model that you can use if you want to have high performance. Obviously, GPT-3.5 Turbo is cheaper. However, you're going to be sacrificing performance which becomes a problem, especially if you're using very long system prompts or you have a big knowledge base where you're retrieving big chunks of data from. When it comes to setting the temperature for a customer support agent, we're gonna want it to be pretty strict with the way that it answers and not deviate off path or be too creative. So we're gonna set it to 0.1, which is gonna be absolutely fine. If you wanna allow image uploads, you can enable that here. For now, we're gonna leave that blank. If you click on additional parameters, we can set up a ton of things here, such as max tokens, top probability, frequency penalty, Penalty, presence penalty and more. What I just like to do in order to make it more human like is set the frequency penalty to either one or 1 1.5, which just gives the agent a much more human like feeling and it talks in a much more natural way. We then go ahead and exit this window. And what's important when you're building something on Flowwise is to constantly save while you're building your project, because if you don't save here, it's not going to save anywhere. And if you for some reason close this window without saving, all of your progress is going to be gone. You also need to save it every time before you you test the agent over here. So that is a key component that you need to get in the habit of doing save the chat flow over and over again. So now that we have chat open AI hooked up, we're going to move it down here. The next thing we're going to do is hook up our memory. 
Now you can use for your memory, you can use, for example, MongoDB to store your memory, which is a great option. And we personally use that for the ease of this tutorial. I'm going to use a buffer memory, which is going to be the buffer window memory. You can simply connect that node to the memory node here. And the size is going to specify how many back and forths of conversation are going to log. So if you have four, that means the AI is going to have memory of the past four interactions, user message, AI message. That is one interaction user message, AI message that are now two interactions. So you can set this to four, you can set it to 10, whatever the case may be. I personally like 10. If you use something like MongoDB, you will have unlimited chat access if you set it up in the right way. In the additional parameters here, you can set up your session ID, which is something that you can do if you're working a lot with the API of Flowwise. However, for now, you can just leave that empty and it's gonna generate a random session ID for you to identify which user has the memory. Now that we've given the agent memory and a chat model, we could already test it. However, the tools area is mandatory. Now, if you don't want to use a tool and you just want an agent, which works based on the prompt without any knowledge base, for example, what I like to do is just simply look for the calculator, take the calculator tool and hook that up over here. Now that you've got the calculator tool hooked up to the agent, you can go ahead and save and we can run our first test where we can simply say, Hey, and it's going to answer, hello, how can I assist you today? Obviously, as you guys can see, we have not set up any prompt, so it has no idea what to do. It doesn't have access to any relevant tools. And before we move on, let's quickly explore what kind of tools we have available inside of Flowwise. So if we scroll down, we can open up the tools section and you can see it has a ton of different tools. It can access the web browser through Brave, the calculator, chain tool, chat flow tool. You can build custom tools using JavaScript. Exa search allows you to search the web, Google custom search, read file. You can do API requests, which are get requests and post requests. You can retrieve, which is great for knowledge base. And we're going to be using that in a second web browsing, write a file to the disk and much more. In this case, we're actually going to use the retriever tool right here. We're going to drag it onto the canvas. We'll delete the calculator for now. We're going to take the retriever tool, move it up here, and we're going to hook up the retriever tool to our agent over here. Now the retriever tool is going to allow us to retrieve documents, which we want to give to the AI as a knowledge base. Now I'm just going to call this FAQs and we're going to say searches and returns knowledge on auto IGDM, which is our software company. So I'm going to use this as a demo for building out the customer support agent. So now that we have the retriever tool, we actually need to hook it up to a retriever. Now in our case, we are going to be using quadrant for this. We're going to take the vector store quadrant. And as you can see down here, it says quadrant retriever. We simply take this and we connect it up to the retriever tool. Now, in order to set up quadrant, we're going to have to navigate over to quadrant.tech. As you can see, this is a very simple tool where you can use even the free version, which gives you a gigabyte free cluster with no credit card required and the starting price for the paid plan, which is simply $0.014 per hour. Now, as you can see, we need to set up a couple things over here in order for this quadrant node to work, which are the connect credentials, the server URL and the collection name. So inside of quadrant, if we navigate over to clusters, you can go ahead and create a cluster. In this case, I'm not using any free cluster yet, so I'm going to be using the free one for demonstration purposes. However, it's important to note that the free one expires if you don't ping it in, I think, seven days. So if it's not used for seven days, it expires and it, everything gets wiped. So that's why for production projects, I would always recommend getting the standard, which is super, super affordable. I'm simply going to name it Auto IGDM Test go down and click on create. Now that we've created it, we can see that if we open it up, it is currently still processing and it says no API keys linked to the cluster. So we're going to click on API keys. We're going to create a new API key. We're going to select the auto IGDM test cluster, which we just set up. We're going to click on okay. And now we have the API key displayed here. We're going to copy that key. We're going to go back into Flowwise, and for the connect credential, we're going to select the dropdown and click on create new. Simply going to call it auto IGDM tests the same as we have it in quadrant and I'm going to paste the API key in here. We now go back into quadrant. We go over to the clusters. As you can see, it's still creating, but it's going to be active in a second. And we're going to copy the cluster URL after opening up the dropdown. We're going to go back and we're going to paste in the URL over here. For the quadrant collection name, we're going to need to take auto IGDM test, which is the name that we just set up. So we're going to type that in here auto IGDM test. We're going to save it because as I said, we need to get in the habit of saving. And now we need a couple more things. We need the embeddings where we can go for embeddings. We scroll down, 
and we take the OpenAI embeddings. We're going to select the credentials that we just set up for the auto IGDM test. And we're simply going to connect it up here to the embeddings node. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is hook up a document, which is going to allow us to upload a document, insert that into our quadrant knowledge base and allow the AI to retrieve that. So we're simply going to go search for docx. We're going to use a docx file, but you can use a PDF file or whatever else you may want to use. So now that we've got that hooked up, we can go ahead and save it and we can chat with the agent and it's going to give us a reply, but it doesn't have any information from the retriever tool yet. Now, before we put some documents into the retriever tool, what we're going to do is we're actually going to work on the prompt for this customer support agent. So simply by hovering over here and opening the window into a larger view with this, we are able to check out our system message and we're going to start writing it. A simple way to structure your prompt is to have the context first, the instructions second, and then you can mention the tools slash the knowledge third. This is an easy way to do it. You can obviously get a lot more complicated and technical, but that would blow this video straight out of proportion. So we're going to rock with these three sections. For context, I'm going to call this agent Mike. So I'm going to say you are Mike, a customer support agent for auto IGDM. Auto IGDM is a cold outreach tool for Instagram, which helps people get more sales and clients on autopilot. It can be found at autoigdm.com and autoigdm.com slash pro. So now we've given it some context and it now knows what it has to do. Now let's just do it as a test. I'm going to save this, save it and just say, who are you? And as we can see, it's now gonna know who it is. I am Mike, a customer support agent for Auto IGDM. How can I assist you today? So we're gonna close it back up, head back into the system prompt, and we're gonna continue working on it. So the instructions are gonna be, we obviously wanna give helpful support advice. So we're gonna say users will be reaching out to you to get support with Auto IGDM. Your task is to assist the user as effectively as possible and help them resolve their issues. You answer any questions in a professional manner and keep your answers as concise as possible. So obviously you can go into a lot more depth here on the instructions. If you wanted to speak in a certain way, if you wanted to do certain things, if you wanted to ask this question first, then ask this. So let's say you're a drop shipping store. You can include more information such as what to say in certain situations. You can also include different tools, which for example, on a drop shipping store, it could allow you to check the status of order numbers. So you could say step one, ask for their order number. Step two, use the tool order checker. So you can set up a custom tool inside of Flowwise order checker. If you guys want a video on this comment down below and I can make a video on that as well to check the order status, etc. In this case, we're going to leave this out. So I'm going to delete this back out. And now we're just going to reference the tools and knowledge. You have access to the FAQs, which is how we named the retriever tool, which you should use every time you answer a question. Never use your general knowledge. Always use the FAQs tool to find answers to the user's question. And we can also set up a fallback. If you cannot find an answer, please refer them to support at autoigdm.com, which I believe is not actually a real email. So don't email us. <laughs> so we're now going to go ahead and close that up. And we're going to test it real quick. How can I assist you with autoigdm today? I have a bug. Obviously we haven't given it any knowledge yet. So it's gonna ask for a bit more details. It isn't sending DMs, it's giving error 101. Now it checked, you can actually see what it did here. It checked the FAQs tool. I couldn't find specific information about error 101. Please reach out to our support team. So now it actually used the fallback instead of making something up, which is why we prompted it in that way. However, now we're gonna give it some information so that it can actually respond to messages. And to do that, we're simply gonna open up a Word document and we're gonna write out some simple FAQs. So what you can do is you can simply write it this way. Question, what is error code? 101 answer to resolve error code 101 and this by the way is a totally made up error code we don't actually have this error code to resolve error code 101 please use the tool in a new browser we're also going to add another one question what is the difference between starter and pro answer pro is fully cloud based and runs 24 7 without needing 
your computer. The starter version, however, needs to be running on your device. So now we have those two questions. We're simply going to save it. I'm going to save it as auto IGDM test FAQ, save it in downloads. And now we're going to go over here and we're going to upload a docx file. So I'm going to navigate over to my downloads and I'm going to find the specific file, which I just saved. So now that I've uploaded the file, you can see it's right here. What we actually need to add is a text splitter. So if you add big documents, you need to split up the document, which is why we add in a recursive character text splitter. We hook it up here, the chunk size, I like to do 1500 chunk overlap, we can do 20. And we go ahead and save it. Now, this is where the green button up here comes into play, we simply click the green button, and we click on up cert, it has now added the record. And we can see that it has added the record right here. It hasn't actually used the character text splitter because the file is so small, but we We've added the information in there. So once we've saved it, we can simply go back, we open up the chat, and we can now say, I get error code 101. And it actually ran the tool and it said to resolve error code 101, please try using the tool in a new browser. If the issue persists, please feel free to reach out to us at support.autoigdm.com. So now we're going to run another test. And we're going to ask it what is the difference with the normal one and pro. So we're going to ask that question, it ran the FAQs tool, if you click on this, you can actually see it had the input difference between normal and pro and the output was actually the chunk that we provided the main difference between the starter and pro version of auto IGDM is the pro version starter version. Now you may notice this is maybe a too small response. And you want it to like explain it more and ask if they need any further assistance, etc. In which case you would need to rephrase the instructions where I said keep your answer as concise as possible. So if we remove this, and we say always ask the user at the end of your message if that helped or if they need anything else. So by playing around with this prompt, you can actually dictate a lot about the way that the AI responds. So we're going to take the exact same message from here, I'm going to clear the chat, and I'm going to send it again. And you'll be able to see the difference in response that we're about to get. So it gave us the same answer, because there's not really much more, we didn't give it more information for the answer, but it now has a much friendlier approach about it. Does that help? Or do you need any further information? We can also make it be much more friendly with us, you answer questions in a professional manner, always greet the user in a friendly way, and always ask the user at the end of their message. So we're going to save that. And now we're going to do the exact same thing again. So we're going to go in. And now it's actually said hello. Now you can work around with this a lot. And you can especially with the instructions, you can customize it, you can say you always start your messages by saying, hi, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna run it right now. And we're gonna see if it says hi, yeah. So we simply run the message. And it says hi, yeah, the main difference is and it still gives us the answer. So with the prompt, you can really play around with it a lot. And over here in the FAQ tool, you can upload all the information about your customer support about your company and anything the customer support agent needs to know. And when you're done, when it comes to integrating, you can simply click on this little widget right here you can either embed it into your website using this as a pop up as a full page, or you can use curl which allows you to access it via API. So if you want to connect it with voice flow, if you want to put it inside of Instagram DMs, etc, this is how you're going to be able to do that. And the other video where I ran through the entire setup, I show as well how to configure this chatbot and import it into your voice flow import it into your Instagram DMs, etc. If you found value in this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content in the future. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.